Hey folks, Dale Davidson here. Thank you for uh, tuning in today. Fur babies, pets, dogs, cats, birds, whatever they may be. Okay, we're going to be talking about planning for your pet's future. The importance of pet trust. Okay, and so look, for many of us, pets are not animals. They're our fur babies. They are family members. They provide us companionship, comfort, unconditional love. You can have the worst day ever. Be so down. You come in and watch your fur baby give you some love unconditionally. Okay. So as responsible fur baby owners, we need to make sure that they're taken care of during their lifetime. Food, place to sleep, medical care, affection, okay? But what happens if something happens to us? Who's going to take care of our fur babies? How can we assure or ensure that their well-being is taken care of, of when we're not here? So this is where the pet trust comes into play. So what is a pet trust? I know you, some of you folks are out there laughing, but it's a real it's a real thing. So a pet trust is a trust, it's a legal arrangement that allows you to set aside money to care for your pet after you pass or if you become incapacitated. Because what happens to pets a lot of times is that the owner dies or the uh, it becomes incapacitated so the pet is turned over to the local shelter okay you don't want that okay this a pet trust would provide you peace of mind knowing that your fur baby is going to be looked at uh, looked after according to your wishes okay so unlike say in an informal arrangement where I say okay uh, I've got a fur baby and I want my son to take care of him or her and um, boom that's it that's kind of an informal arrangement doesn't give my son any kind of uh, comfort knowing that now he's gonna have to pay the vet bills and food bills and all that. By the way, our fur babies had cancer twice, surgery twice, is on four separate medications <laughs> for anxiety. And unfortunately, we think she's got uh, dementia. But we're taking care of her. We want, if something happens to us, we want somebody to take care of her just like we are. Okay, so that's why, you know, you should consider a pet trust. And by the way, the pet trust doesn't have to be a freestanding trust. It could be part of your will. And that's where we normally put them. So a pet trust just ensures your pet's well-being. Okay? So without a pet trust, we don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully your fur baby isn't going to be turned into the local shelter. Okay? Now, friends and families, they may offer to take care of it. But you know, if you've got a financial burden there, that's going to be tough. Especially if somebody took our fur baby with the cost of medications that we're paying, which we're glad to do. But uh, I doubt somebody would, would invest that amount in, um, in our precious little Harley, was her name. Likewise, a stranger might not understand your pet's needs. For instance, my neighbors have greyhounds. Did you realize that you can't just adopt a greyhound? You, I mean, these my neighbors had to go through background checks. They actually had whoever was doing the background check contact me to see if they were going to be suitable parents for the greyhound. It's a great program, okay? Or another client had Maine Coon cats. Those are some, look them up, Maine Coon Cat. Look it up on Google. Some, uh, a big, uh, big cat. So, but they've got special needs, okay? So they got special dietary needs. They got to be cared for, medical care. 
day-to-day uh, -day routines. I mean, look, those greyhounds, you got to walk those things. They're used to running, okay? So you can't just turn them loose. Also, caring for a, a, a pet can be a significant financial burden on your family or your friends and time commitment. So by setting up the trust, uh, you provide the funds for your fur baby's care. And that takes that financial burden off. In my, my example, my son, they can't afford the medications that it takes each month to, uh, for Harley to not have her seizures, okay? But I wanna make sure she's taken care of. So we're gonna put that, uh, we, we've got that taken care of, okay? It reduces the risk that, you know, Harley, our fur baby's gonna be, they call them rehomed or put in a shelter because of lack of resources, okay? I dare say that if, if she was rehomed or, or put in a, uh, a shelter, that she would not last long just because of the seizures and um, that, would, that would break our heart. So, look, a pet trust is legally bonding, okay? So you, you have a trustee to carry out your wishes. So this legal protection ensures that the funds are used solely for your fur baby, okay? For your fur baby's benefit and that uh, they receive the care that you want them to receive. And if your trustee fails to meet that obligation, they get removed and taken to court, okay? So your fur baby's protected. I like to see separate trustees from guardians, so to speak. So whoever's got your fur baby is not the same as the trustee. Checks and balances, okay? So how does a, how does a pet trust work? Well, number one, you s select a trustee. So this is somebody who you feel is responsible for managing trust funds and ensuring that your fur baby receives proper care. This can be a friend, a family member, lawyer, accountant, pet care, or it can be anybody you feel or you have trust in, okay? So it's important to choose somebody who you believe to be reliable and understands and respects your wishes for your fur baby. So in setting up the trust, normally you set it up with somebody like an attorney like us to draft the trust, okay? The document would include um, relatively detailed instructions for your fur baby's care, the amount of money you want to set aside and all of that. And so we're working with a client now who has several dogs and cats. And so what we're, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we take the life expectancy of one of their fur babies times the average cost, monthly cost, and that's what we're funding for each fur baby times the number they, they have. So in this case, if it's a thousand dollars a month, then uh, times, let's say, uh, it's 84, so it's $8,400, no, $84,000 uh, for one animal. I know that sounds like a lot, but over their life expectancy, that's it's not. So, um, you know, the calculations can get pretty intense, but this is what they want. They want to make sure that their fur babies are taken care of, okay? I would suggest you always name a successor trustee in case the original trustee can't or is unwilling to con con continue in that role. Now, how do you fund the trust? Well, you fund the trust with uh, money, usually. You can get a life insurance policy or you can fund it with assets from your state. Remember that the m amount of money you set aside needs to cover all aspects of care. Not only just food, but vet expenses, medications, grooming, special needs for your pet. I had a golden retriever one time who was aller allergic to beef, so we had to get a special diet for the, uh, for the golden. You also may want to include an amount to pay for the trustee's time and effort in managing the trust. While the trustee manages the funds, the caregiver is the person who takes physical custody of your fur baby. Now, choose somebody who's a pet lover 
and choose somebody who is willing to provide daily care for your fur baby. Uh, it's a good idea to discuss all of this with your caregivers or potential caregivers in advance to ensure that they're prepared for whatever the responsibility. Again, the more specific you are, the better. Okay, so include details about routines, preferences, special care they need, whatever it may be, that it helps ensure continuity and care for your fur baby. Always have a backup plan in whatever you do because life is unpredictable. So consider what would happen if your caregiver or trustee can't fulfill their roles. Look at alternates for both positions to ensure your fur babies continue to thrive. Okay? Now, your pet's needs change over time. Okay? So it's important to review and update your pet trust periodically. I mean, like you would update your will periodically when things happen. Okay, this ensure that the trust remains relevant and effective in providing for your fur baby's current needs. In conclusion, so a pet trust, this is a thoughtful and responsible way to ensure your fur, fur baby's uh, well-being. So this is some legal protections you can do today and financial security today and, and basically peace, peace of mind for you knowing that your fur baby will be cared for and according to your wishes. Well, it may seem like a, a complex process, and some people might even see that this is silly, but it's not, okay? Working with somebody like me or, or another qualified attorney can help you navigate the legal requirements and create that plan specifically tailored for your fur baby's needs. So take the steps. Okay, by taking the steps, you're providing your fur baby with some love and care. Uh, it's the same they've given you, even when you can no longer be there in person. Hey, thank you for tuning in today. We appreciate you. I hope you learned something about fur baby trust or pet trust. Hey, check out this video. Can you put your dog in your will? Uh, give you a little bit more insights. So until next time, be blessed.